In 1960s America, the gay community marched towards their rights and redefined the definition of civil liberties and what it meant to be a gay American. The 1960s left a stain in American history with the rebellious sentiments that led to political, economic, and social change. African Americans took a stand against the discrimination imposed on them by the government and society. Protests against the Vietnam War began to spread all over the country and another group started to rise. The gay community said no more and took a stand against the oppression they faced by the U.S. government and society. The protesters of the Stonewall Riots took a stand against political, economic, and social injustices towards the gay community. The participants of the riots stood up against the discriminatory laws the U.S. government imposed on the community, the restriction of economic opportunities, and the prejudice put on the gay community. The Stonewall Riots sparked the modern LGBTQ civil rights movement that continues to this day. Although the Stonewall Riots had not been the first uprising, it was the one that left the most powerful impact. It gave rise to a revolution within the gay community as they took a stand for their freedom. The Stonewall Inn was a popular gay bar in Greenwich Village, New York, that was bought and owned by the Genovese's, a mafia family. The Stonewall Inn was one of the few places the gay community felt comfortable showing affection towards one another. However, just after 3 a.m. on June 28, 1969, Police officers raided the popular bar because of an expired liquor's license and vowed to drive the fags out of the village. Since raids were common, customers were already familiar with the protocol. But this night was different as several customers took a stand by retaliating against the police. A few moments later after the customers took a stand, bystanders joined the fight and began to throw objects at the police officers. A participant stated, I remember feeling jubilant and joyful and angry. Something finally had to give. The gay people said no more, no more abuse. The riot was so intense that the police had to barricade themselves inside Stonewall. As the police were pushing back the crowd, the protesters formed a kick line and chanted, We are the Stonewall girls. We wear our hair in curls. We wear no underwear. We show our pubic hair. We wear our dungarees above our Nelly knees. After that night, there were smaller uprisings throughout the rest of the week. Although the riots eventually ended, the spirit of Stonewall continued to cause ripple effects of political, economic, and social change for the gay community throughout the 20th century. Two years prior to Stonewall, in 1967, the Black Cat Tavern protests occurred in Silver Lake, California, where the patrons took a stand against police harassment towards the gay community. Throughout history, the gay community has had to overcome political barriers. The U.S. government has made several laws to target the gay community including anti-sodomy laws. These laws prohibit anal and oral sex. Originally, anti-sodomy laws were created to protect women, children, and animals, but later on evolved to target the gay community. In 1971, Colorado and Oregon were among the first states to repeal their anti-sodomy laws. They adopted a revision of their state's criminal code, which repealed common law crimes and decriminalized sodomy. In Oregon's tentative draft of the criminal code revision, it stated, all homosexual conduct engaged in between consenting adults in private is not criminal. Due to the change in the model penal code which is used as a way to standardize American criminal laws, several states slowly followed and repealed their anti-sodomy laws. However, political change continued to be slow until gay men and women had a direct voice in their government. It was in 1977 when Harvey Milk was elected into the San Francisco Board of Supervisors and became the first openly gay politician. He believed that the only way there could be change in gay rights was if a gay politician was elected. There is a major difference. A friend in office and a gay person in office, it's not enough anymore just to have friends represent us, no matter how good that friend may be. On November 1978, the Briggs Initiative, or Proposition 6, was presented to Milk. This legislation prohibited homosexuals from teaching in California public schools. He urged homosexuals to come out and stand up for their rights. Proposition 6 was defeated on November 7, 1978 by a million votes. With the spirit of Stonewall, new organizations continue to form and promote gay equality such as Fairpack. This organization was created in 1983 and worked to expand gay rights. It was in 1985, only two years after Fairpack was created, the Gay Rights Bill was presented and passed to the New York City Council. The City Council, somebody in the City Council in New York would initiate a bill to say no discrimination based on sexual orientation. While the gay population was fighting for their rights, there were still many economic obstacles to overcome. 
The government and school boards continue to discriminate against the gay community, resulting in many limitations such as not being able to practice law, medicine, or education. It was not only in these professions that homosexuals faced discrimination. It was often in the military in which homosexuality was grounds for a dishonorable discharge. Many gay high-ranking military officials had to keep quiet about their sexuality or they would lose their position. Also in the business industry, many gay men were afraid of opening bars because of the alliance between the mafia and police. In fact, most gay bars in New York were owned by the mafia who would pay off the police in order to not arrest their customers. In return, the customers had to abide by the mafia's rules. As a result of the Stonewall Riots, the homophile youth movement, or HIM, gained momentum. This movement was created by homosexuals in 1967 in order to take a stand against the corruption between the police and the mafia. HIM published a statement on June 28, 1969, urging, 1. That gay businessmen step forward and open gay bars that will be run legally with competitive pricing and a healthy social atmosphere. 2. That homosexual men and women boycott places like Stonewall. The only way it seems that we can get criminal elements out of the gay bar is simply to make it unprofitable for them. 3. That homosexual citizens of New York City and concerned heterosexuals write to Mayor Lindsay demanding a thorough investigation and effective action to correct this intolerable situation. It was because of the Stonewall Riots of 1969 that the gay community took a stand against the economic injustices. The participants of the riots stood up against the restriction of economic opportunities by creating organizations and movements. Throughout the 1950s, members of the gay community, along with their friends and family, would often be listed as a homosexual by the FBI. This resulted in limitations such as not having homosexual relationships. The United States Postal Office also kept a list to monitor homosexuals in order to inform the police if they saw anything suspicious. It wasn't uncommon for police to sweep neighborhoods and arrest those who were gay. Gay members were not only targeted by police, but by American society as well. Americans often shunned homosexuality, yet the only time where it was acceptable was on television. Either they are the tragic, show me a happy, show me a happy homosexual and I'll show you a gay corpse, or they are Franklin Pangborn, the, the swishy hairdresser. At the time, being gay was considered a psychological disorder. Many members of the gay community were forcibly admitted to mental hospitals by their family. Many state hospitals tried to cure homosexuality. They performed lumbotomies, castrations, and facilitated cruel treatment methods. A gay member who went through homosexuality treatment stated, the first step is where they deconstruct us as a person. Their tactics still haunt me. Aversion therapy, shock therapy, harassment, and occasional physical abuse. They removed us of everything that made us a unique person. It wasn't until after Stonewall the gay community took a stand by creating an organization called the Gay Liberation Front. The Gay Liberation Front hosted the first Gay Pride March on June 28, 1970 in New York, which still continues to be done. Three years after the Gay Pride March, the American Psychiatric Association removed homosexuality from its Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Almost 50 years ago, the gay community took a stand against the economic, political, and social injustices that were placed upon them. Because of all the organizations such as HIM, Fairpack, and the figures that arose after the Stonewall Rights, the gay rights movement continued as individuals stood up for their rights. Major obstacles have been overcome such as the ability to openly serve in the U.S. military and legality of gay marriage in all 50 states. From 1993 to 2011, President Bill Clinton signed the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy, instructing military personnel to don't ask, don't tell, don't pursue, and don't harass, which theoretically lifted the ban on homosexuals serving in the military. After President Obama terminated the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy, members of the LGBTQ community were truly allowed to openly serve in the military. On June 26, 2015, another monumental event for the LGBTQ community occurred when the Supreme Court ruled in the case of Oberfeld versus Hodges that the state-level ban on gay marriage were unconstitutional. On June 24, 2016, President Obama added the Stonewall Inn to the list of national monuments which is dedicated to tell the story of LGBTQ Americans. Although there is still a lot of work to be done for LGBTQ equality, Stonewall changed the spirits of the gay community and laid a foundation for them to fight and take a stand for their rights.